Dear brothers, what is the best part? Listen to the word, says the master. Listen to the verb, that became flesh. And came to dwell with his children. That is the best part, that will not be taken away from the children. And how much more the children, will want to continue to remain adherent, to the word heard, all the more that part, to them will belong, and no one, will be able to take it away from them. This is the true beatitude of children of the Mother Church, listen to the word. Listen to the verb descended from heaven. The word made flesh, love made person, that the Father has once again sent, to give to his children that part, that the world did not want to welcome, recognize, and that the children may live. And for this rejoice. No toil, no agitation, no service, that the world requires, will be able to take away the joy, extinguish the joy of the children, of the new Jerusalem. This is what today, I want to imprint in your heart, in this stage of our itinerary. In this time dedicated to the Marian ascent, which brings us all to contemplate Mary, the assumed, the queen. The Corredemptrix, in order to be assumed, together with her immaculate heart. That immaculate heart, destined to win. Not to succumb. Great is the battle, between Mary and her lineage, the woman and her lineage, and the serpent. So it has been written from the beginning, and so is. This battle is being experienced, entered in the living, a bloody battle, for how many, many cannot see it, and they try with all their might to push it away. This is the true battle that the children of God, united to Mary, are fighting to redeem this humanity, so there can be true peace. So many today ask for peace, so many people today toil, they agitate themselves, trying to, bring peace. Good, every human endeavor aimed at the attainment of peace. But I say to you, without God, never can there be peace. Without God's love returning to the center of relations between men and between nations, never can there be peace. For the true peace, is and will only be in God, in Jesus, Christ, Son of God. In the moment when love, and the spirit of service, recalled in this gospel page, will return to be centered, peace will be stable on earth. But love not as man understands it, but as God has taught us. Here is, what must be understood. And here that these two women, narrated today, from the evangelist, help us to understand, the relationship that God, Jesus, the relationship of brotherly, pure, holy love, he had with women. These two women, two sisters. One, Mary, recurring name, which listened to the word of the Master. The other, intent on service. Necessary, to listen to the word. Necessary, service. We are in this world, while not belonging to it. While not belonging, not having espoused the logic of this world, we live in this world and we cannot exempt ourselves, from doing all that being in this world demands. Here's, therefore, that the priority, must be given to listening to the word. Having done that, one must, devote oneself to daily service. The first and most important service is the family. For those who constituted it, for those who uttered that yes. It doesn't matter when, important is to do it well, and this I assure you, as pontiff, and above all as father, is the part that requires more commitment. Nothing is easy. Nothing is taken for granted, as far as, the family is the most beautiful thing, that God has given us. The part that requires more effort, this for the groom, and this is for the bride. This in the relationship with children, and for the children in relation to the parents. And so for the other members of the family, requires sacrifice. Just as work requires sacrifice in order to be able to sustain the family. So many are the sacrifices that especially today in this time must be done, to be able to support the family in a dignified way. Where often, both spouses are called to work, because, it is no longer enough, often, that one alone devotes himself to work and the other full-time to the family not by choice, but by obligation. Because these times require this. And this has exacerbated the task even more, for those who want to put the family at the center. Because there is less time, 
there are more preoccupations, there is more weariness, there is more fatigue, there is more agitation, and one recurs in the error that Jesus highlighted on this page. No toil, no agitation. This is the daily struggle, that the children of God have to fight to keep away from one's daily routine, agitation, wheezing, the preoccupations that the world continually brings. Here is the just and holy balance to which all of us are called. To which in a special way the children of God are called, because the children of God must be before they are Christians, and manifest themselves as Christians, true men. As often I repeat. Credible. Credible men and women, in this society. Who are coherent, with what they say. And what they do, and consequently be able to manifest themselves as believers. True believers, true heralds of the word, that has been heard. Listen Israel, I am the Lord your God. First listen. Then, testify. By example, and with words. Here is the sound and holy proselytizing, to which the children of God are called. To be able to announce to all Jesus, the only Savior. So that in the name of Jesus all may be baptized and consequently saved. Hard is the task today of Christians. Hard is the task of women, the woman we said is in perpetual conflict. Not because she wanted it, but because the enemy, has aimed at her. So it is written in Genesis, so it is written in the Apocalypse, first and last book of sacred scripture. Where the war and struggle between the ancient serpent is described, and the woman and her lineage. But the woman will win. But to win the woman must imitate she who won, and not imitate she who lost. Here is the dichotomy between Eve and Mary. Mary and Eve. Eve allowed herself to be seduced by that thought, here is the enemy that attacks the woman especially in the mind. Putting thoughts, 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 seducing, and here instead is Mary. Who won with the weapons of obedience, of purity and humility. The weapons that make win every Christian, man and woman. The woman in a special way, because the all-pure, drove away, he who is haughty. The all-humble, the all-obedient, with her obedience, with her yes, won the one who has disobeyed God. The woman today, who wants to win, must look to the woman who won. Mary won. Together with Mary, this other Mary won, Maria Giuseppina. She who embodied her virtues perfectly. Not a woman of other times. But a woman of this time. Because, thinking of Mary most holy, so many might say, but two thousand years ago things were different. This Mary has lived this time, our time. And so looking to her example, all women who want to win, can do so without, having to figure out how to do so. Those who knew her, well lived in her virtues. The virtue of obedience to God. She said yes, the 15th of May. She has renewed that yes every day. A question had been asked of her, will you help me? Yes. And every day that yes was renewed, for 33 years. Welcoming all those whom the Father and the Holy Spirit would send to her, through the Son. And from, from that little window, with infinite and holy patience, always had a word for all, of encouragement, and when needed, also of warning, to make the truth understood. Yes, and even when it was needed, no so that everyone could understand and consequently do well. And came July 5th, where she had to renew her yes, for the last and eternal time, an eternal yes that brought her to ascend, to be now, in the presence of God. Here, that those who want to win, look to her example. She did not back down, even in all that pertained to human service. Being perfect, as wife, first even as a daughter, sister, so bride, mother, grandmother. And so with her work, carrying it out with great dignity, and with great skill. Those who have known her well know, how good she was. Her tailoring workshop first, in the management of her store later. All done, well, very well putting into practice all that needs to be done, to do the will of God. And she won. And has led so many to win. Here is the woman who must return to the center. This mother church loves the woman. 
lives, to make the woman return to be the center of the Father's plan of salvation. Not as man has made her to be, a woman object. Not a woman who has sold out, or would like to sell out, the greatest gift that the Father entrusted to her. We all heard at the beginning of the celebration that wail, of that child. Here is the most beautiful gift that woman has received, the gift of bringing to life, prerogative that belongs to the Father and only to the Father. And the Father in his infinite goodness toward the woman, he gave it to her. The gift of generating life. What greater gift? And now so many, and many, would like push away this gift. Not allowing children to be born, or even freezing them. Throwing them away, selling them. What is man doing? He is ruining everything God made. So then things go backwards. Because one goes against what the Father in his wisdom, and all-seeing, has established. In the perfect order between man and woman, male and female he created them. Equal dignity, with different, complementary roles and tasks. One cannot flatten everything, one cannot make everything fluid, as if man can become woman, and woman can become man. One must give every child that is born certainties. Here is the true right of giving to those who don't have the right, the certainty, and the knowledge of who is your father of who is your mother. Those who love the right, this should do, defend the defenseless. Too easy, to get powerful with the little ones. And become, weak with the strong. Never this church, will compromise, for God descended from heaven to free his children made again slaves, by those who have other interests, by those who yes, pursues and weaves oblique relationships. Not this church. Which is straight. And linear in its own behavior. If the world has not yet recognized this church, because it is the world that is oblique, not the church. The church is righteous, and pursues the straight path. The one that the Master taught. But since that today, the teaching of the Master is no longer accepted and welcomed, because there are other teachings that have supplanted these teachings, here is the confrontation. The Church does not promote confrontations. But it defends itself and will always defend itself. Because this Church will never back down in front of no one. This must be clear to all. Because this Church is destined to win. Because Maria, New Jerusalem, it is written that will crush the head of the enemy of God, with her heel. Mary and her lineage will win. Behold, that those who want to be faithful to God, follows the teachings of the Gospel, follows the teachings of the Master, and welcomes this part, the best part that the Father has given to his children.